Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner C++ lesson number three. Today we are going to be talking about um, order of operations and how that is going to affect you. Uh, let me just type int main, get started, oh, that's quotation marks, there we go. Alright, so Order of operations uh, is a concept that's commonly in math where uh, we follow a rule called PEMDAS. Um, and what PEMDAS is, is parentheses, I think that's how you spell that, exponents, multiplication, slash division. They're handled with the same uh, parity level or the same uh, priority level rather, and addition slash subtraction, again handled with the same uh, level of priority. So in C++ it's pretty much the same, but there's some interesting differences. Uh, parentheses are still number one. Um, so these are always evaluated first. Now, not int. That's how you can tell someone's a programmer. They go to type in and they type int instead. Um, and then in C++, there's technically no such thing as, a, uh, as an exponent. I mean, there kind of is but there kind of isn't at the same time. Um, so it's a bit difficult to say that they're what comes next because the only implementation of a exponent is through, um, is through use of parentheses. So unless you write your own function, in which case, get out of here. Um, all right, so next then comes multiplication and division. So those are next. Um, and then add slash sub. Those are last in priority. And um, these are technically the highest because technically a parenthesis doesn't really do any mathematical function. I mean, doing like eight times Seven with a million parentheses like that doesn't actually change anything. It just means that I have a million parentheses. But that's neither here nor there. Um, the most important part is um, evaluates left to right. And so basically, that means that if I have a one times five minus 4 times 3, this is going to evaluate left to right, which means that I'm going to end up with 5 minus 12. So in that case, if I actually do this, see out, um, 1 times 5 minus 4 times 3, just like that, um, I'll actually toss that in parentheses just for the sake of making sure it knows what I'm doing we get negative 7, which is 5 minus 12. So in that case, we can kind of get a better understanding of what's going on. Obviously, we don't go 1 times 5 equals 5 minus 4 equals 1 times 3, because these are getting evaluated first. The 1 and 5 and 4 and 3 are evaluated first. So a practical application of this is um, uh, doing some type of, of interest calculation. And so that's kind of what I, I would like for you guys to do for homework. Um, I want you guys to take in a simple uh, number. Let's say we have a int principle rate, uh, crap, should do equals zero, rate equals zero, comma time equals zero. Okay, so by the way, I don't think I ever introduced this, but 
if you're making multiple variables of the same type and you're setting them um, just to something simple, you can do it on the same line like this. It's not a great habit to get into, but um, because it can make it a lot harder to read your program. But aside from that, it's not horrible either. So what I want you guys to do for this homework is to take in um, an initial investment. Um, what is the initial investment? Uh, question mark. Um, do CN principal. And we're just going to copy that. What is the annual percentage yield, better known as the rate? So that's APY, or more commonly APR. Um, CN for rate. And next, just do a C out and ask how many years will this be invested for? And once again, we'll get the space there. And just to make things, so if we just run this right now, we'll just do C in time. Um, the only concern that I kind of have with this is if I say, so you see down here, we have what is the initial investment? Let's say 10,000. Um, what is the APY 10? And let's say 5. So it doesn't do anything, obviously. And that's what your homework is going to be, is to take principal rate and time inside of this program that I've built so far. And I want you guys to fill in the blank here. See out the amount of money at the end of the time period will be and you can either do this by doing the math right here you can say you know x multiplied by y multiplied by z or however you're supposed to do that um, it's or you can make yourself a new variable called int total. Um, once again, int might not be the best thing to use here because maybe you want to use a rate that's like 5.5%. Um, and an int won't handle that, so you might want to change these to double. So I'll post this code up and uh, you guys can do the homework when you're ready. Thanks.